Hey guys, I'm Will and in this video today, I wanna to share with you my techniques for getting my images tack sharp from front to back every single time and how I create shots like this without even using a tripod. I'm gonna share with you four common things that are often overlooked, which can really lead to you not getting the best clarity and detail out of your images. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the camera gear now Let's head out into the field, because let's face it, I don't really like being in here, and I'm sure it's a bit nicer for you if we're out in the field. So we're gonna load up now with the gear. We'll go into a forest. I'm gonna break down these four different things. We'll take some example shots, pull up and look at the results. And by the end of this, I'm pretty confident that you'll have a really solid grasp and understanding and be able to pretty much get tack sharp photos every single time. If you like this video as well, please like and subscribe, hit the notification thing. I hate saying that, but it's kind of necessary. Your support is really appreciated. With that out of the way, let's go. So let me break down the things you need to keep in mind to get a tack sharp photo. There's really four things that you need to consider. Firstly, the shutter speed. One of the reasons why people get a sharp image because they're shooting at a shutter speed which is too slow to be handheld and therefore you need a tripod. Now we're gonna to get to that in depth in a minute. The second thing could be the depth of field, your f-stop. You haven't closed down the aperture enough to make sure that your depth of field is extending the full range of your frame. So you might be a bit soft in the foreground or the background, depending on what the f-stop is and where you've actually focused. The other issue could be the ISO. If your ISO is too high, you're gonna get a lot of noise and with a lot of noise comes a lack of detail in clarity in the file. And lastly, it could be the fact that you are way too close to your foreground. So if you're getting really close to the foreground, your depth of field won't be able to cover that full distance of that framing that you have. And in that scenario, you might have to do a focus stack. So let's quickly do a few example shots now with these four things in mind and we'll see how the problem is there and then how we remedy that. So firstly, shutter speed. One of the big things that a lot of people are gonna tell you is you need a tripod. You have to have a tripod. You can't get a sharp photo without a tripod. Now that is just absolutely not true because I haven't used a tripod for my images in almost five years now. And I've printed these over 60 inches wide. They attack sharp. I would never compromise on quality. You don't need a tripod. And if you needed a tripod to get a sharp photo, then that's saying that we can never have a sharp photo if it's been shot from a helicopter, a plane, or a boat, for example, which we know is not true. What shutter speed is the limit then for when you do need to get a tripod out? Well, it's gonna come down to a few factors. The vibration in your hand, which is gonna be different for every individual, and also, is your body and lens stabilized? Are you on a DSLR? Are you on a mirrorless that has IBIS, etc.? A golden rule or a guideline to keep in mind, and I definitely break this rule, and if you have a mirrorless that's stabilized, you'll be able to break it, is whatever your focal length is, try and match that with your shutter speed or be faster. So for example, if I'm at 20 mil, make sure that that shutter speed isn't really going below 20th of a second. If we're zooming into 200 mil, make sure you're around 200th of a second or faster. The wider we go, the slower we can go with our shutter speed because the movement is way less pronounced. Of course, once we zoom in, everything's magnified, including that shake in your hand. Now, if you have a mirrorless body with inbuilt image stabilization, we can break that guideline, we can go slower. And for every individual, this will vary how slow you can go. For me, I can confidently shoot wide at 16 mil at one eighth of a second, one sixth of a second, even a quarter of a second, depending on my body position, how cold it is, etc. So all my images that have slow shutter effects and shooting in low light, I haven't used a tripod. So let's do two shots now, one way too slow and then one just right. So I'm gonna pull up and we'll just do a frame here at 16 mil. And I'm sitting, focusing in the mid ground area. And what I'm going to do is take a shot at say one six of a second. And when I shoot this frame, there we go. And I'm gonna zoom in and check that it's tack sharp, which it is, it's sharp all the way through. Now I'm gonna slow that down to a point that I know for me, it's too slow. So I'm gonna slow it down to say, 0.4 seconds and I'll still be nice and steady and when I zoom in at this one at 0.4 just a little bit blurry it's just slightly out and I'm zooming in here at 100% all the way in and I can just see in the background in particular and when I check the corners and I'm going to do a last one at say 0.6 seconds 
and yet yeah, that one is 100% definitely soft. And I'm just zooming in and checking that on the back, magnifying it. And that's the workflow I suggest you always do when you're in the field. I'm always shooting when there's light and it's pretty rare for me to have to go that slow on my shutter speed. If I want water movement extra slow, say one or two seconds, I'm happy to shoot that handheld and then blend that in with an exposure blend to a faster shot at say one tenth of a second and I can blend to the two together. If you're shooting in blue hour where there is no light anymore, then yes, you're gonna need a tripod and obviously Astro as well. If you're on a DSLR, you won't be able to go as slow as what I did there where I'm shooting at say one sixth of a second, one eighth of a second and nice and steady. I even hold my breath and I'm gonna check that one now, one six and it's just tack sharp. Now, if you're on a DSLR, you won't be able to go that slow. The vibration from the mirror flipping up and down is just gonna cause a little bit of shake. You won't be able to do it. So, to summarize, understand what your absolute limit is with being handheld. If you need to go below that to get the exposure brighter, that's when it's time to get a tripod out. Once you're on the tripod, obviously it's 100% stabilized. You don't have to worry. You can be five seconds, 10 seconds, three minutes if you want to. For me, I just prefer the flexibility of being handheld in the field. It feels much more organic. I can move around and check compositions way faster. And like I said, I don't have to compromise on quality. I don't have to boost the ISO up. Uh, or adjust the f-stop. Now there won't be a little bit of manipulation there on some occasions, particularly in an environment like this where there's no light and it is a little bit dark, but otherwise I'm typically able to get the f-stop I need and the ISO. So with that in mind, let's look at those next things. So the second point that we mentioned was the depth of field. Are you giving yourself enough depth with your aperture? So when we adjust our f-stop, it's that blade inside the lens opening and closing the lower the f-stop number, the wider that aperture is getting. It's letting in light, but it's also giving us a shallow depth of field. As that number goes up, f9, f11, f16, it's giving us more depth. So sometimes you might just not be closing down the aperture enough, particularly when you have something very close to you in the foreground, and that's the key. It all comes down to proximity to first subject matter. If I'm far away from all my subject matter, if the first item is 20 feet away or beyond to the camera that's almost a flat plane and depending on the focal length it almost doesn't matter what the f-stop is it will all be sharp if i go wide like i am now and then i start to get close to some foreground i'll need a narrow aperture to get everything sharp so let's just do some examples here i'm going to sit on what i would consider too shallow of a depth of the field let's say f6.3 i'm going to focus about a third of the way in which is typically what i always do and I'll get a rough composition here, which I think looks all right. At f6.3, if I zoom in and check, it's very sharp where I focused in that mid-ground area. As I scroll down to the foreground, it's soft. 6.3 just won't be enough. It'll be sharp where I focused and then a little bit either side of that. But when it gets to those extreme edges, it's just not going to give me that coverage. I go to aperture for wide angle photography where I'm getting a foreground that's relatively close is around f11. So let's do the shot now at f11. We'll check that. So I can just zoom in on the back of this, through the viewfinder here. Now I'm sharp all the way through in the corners, right down the bottom. Great. Think about how much depth do you have? The best way to really know the answer is to just shoot and check like I did and then adjust accordingly. If f11 didn't cover it for me there, maybe I'd try f16 for example. Now the other thing I mentioned was focus stacking. If you're shooting a scene like this and you're checking the clarity right in the, the lower part and you still can't get it sharp no matter what, even at say f16, you might have to focus stack. And that's just because the lens optically just can't get that coverage because the first subject matter is way too close to you. That's a scenario where you'll need to take two frames and, or at least two, maybe three or four, depending on how close you want to get. And to do that, you'll just have to, you know, get your composition. I can do it in autofocus. So I'd focus on that foreground matter, recompose, take the shot, and then push the shutter again, which would focus in the background. That will give you my two frames. And then in Photoshop your, or your editing software, whatever you're using, those two exposures, or maybe there's three or four, they need to be stacked and merged together. Now we've got a sharp image from front to back all the way through. 
If you need more than two, you can't use the autofocus method. You just flick the lens to manual and then you can just spin the focus ring and just simply shoot, adjust, shoot, adjust, shoot, get them through. And of course, if you're on the tripod, same type of thing. In our processing, we're auto aligning those layers. So even if there's a slight amount of movement, which there will be even on a tripod due to something called focus breathing, you're gonna have to auto align regardless. The last thing I mentioned was the ISO. So typically I'm trying to shoot either ISO 100 or 200 around there because that's where my camera noise performance is the best as well as its dynamic range, its ability to retain shadow and highlight detail. Once I start going above 200, the noise just increases, increases. Now, depending on the model of your camera, that will determine how high you're comfortable to go with your ISO. For me, I don't really, really like going above 640, and I'll only do that in a place like this where there's a lack of light, maybe I have to boost it up. But really, I'm aiming to get that optimal quality out of my images, so if I ever need to print it really large, I've got that confidence there. So let's do an example now at say ISO 100, something a bit ridiculous like 16,000, 51,000. And we'll zoom in on those and check the results and you're gonna see pretty quickly how bad it is. Now, of course, when you're looking on the back of your screen, if you're not zooming in and it's gonna look sweet, same as missing your focus or not getting enough depth of field, you always should be zooming in, pushing the magnifying glass button zooming in and checking the files and that's where you're going to find out you know is it sharp or is it not the last thing i will mention is where to focus I, that's one of the common things people ask me is where are we focusing where do we need to focus most of the time i'm focusing what i'd call a third of the way into the scene and the one way to describe that is you know obviously you could look at your frame and just envision going up a third of the way you know into the frame i just say imagine if you had a little stone and you just threw it just a little throw like that it's just gonna end up just before that foreground in that early mid-ground area. If you're at F11, F16 and you're wide, it's not even that critical where you focus, to be honest. It's not worth stressing about too much. Mainly avoid focusing on the extreme end of things. I don't often focus in the far distance and I don't often focus on that immediate foreground. It's just somewhere in between there. That way where I focus, the depth of field should extend all the way through if the f-stop is right. And that goes back to that tip we said earlier about giving yourself a narrow aperture to get that coverage. There we go, that's my tips for getting a tack sharp image. Make sure the shutter speed is fast enough if you're handheld. If you need to go slow, get a tripod out. You do not need a tripod for sharp images. It's just fundamentally not true. You need a tripod if the shutter speed or your hand shake is causing vibration and getting a blurry image. You'll need a faster shutter speed then or get the tripod out and you can shoot slow shutters. But you do not need it as a landscape photographer or any genre to get a sharp shot. Make sure your depth of field is giving you enough coverage. So a narrow aperture typically. If you don't have foreground matter or if everything's far away, the depth of field's almost irrelevant. So think of depth of field in regards to do I have subject matter near to me as well as something far away? Now there's a lot of depth. If you're shooting everything that's far away or even just, you know, top down a flat scene, there is no depth of field. The f-stop is not as relevant. But if you want to do a grand landscape scene with a foreground, mid-ground background, you will need a narrow aperture somewhere anywhere from f8, 11, 16, etc. Keep the ISO low for optimal image clarity, low noise, better dynamic range as well. So you're gonna get that much sharper look to your image. And lastly, if you're getting ultra close to foreground, you might need to focus stack. All right guys, I hope that helped you out. The best thing you can do now is just grab the camera, head outside, front yard, backyard, wherever you wanna go, and just start experimenting. Run through those four different things, analyze the results, and then you'll be able to get those sharp images that you've been after. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you on the next one.